Hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn here from the Laws of Attraction in Action. That's the Laws of Attraction in Action.com and the Laws of Attraction in Action the Facebook group. Well, this is take two because I thought this was recording and I cannot find it on Facebook. So uh, I couldn't find it anyway. So I'm assuming it wasn't recording live. So I am truly hoping that this is recording live. And let me see if I'm able to actually go here and find out if it's doing just that. Um, yes, here we go. I'm live. Uh, like I said, guys, I, I had started this process earlier. I did this earlier uh, a little while ago and couldn't find it. But that being said, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn from the Laws of Attraction in Action. And that's the Laws of Attraction in Action dot uh, com and the group. So. I'm hoping, guys, that you are having an awesome Sunday, a very blessed Sunday, and I hope that you had an awesome week last week. And wherever you found yourself last week, if you feel that you were in a deficit, you didn't do everything that you needed to do, or you did some and and more, which is actually where I found myself this last week, that in particular yesterday, which was Saturday. Saturday was abs absolutely awesome. I mean, it was kick butt awesome i got so much work accomplished yesterday and it's really as I, as i said before uh, as i'm may well go from now um when you have crystal clear clarity on what it is that you want to get done you know when when you know it you can see it you can feel it you can taste it you can hear it you can smell it when you have that crystal clear clarity everything just comes together and it comes together well so, guys, again, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn, and today we're going to talk about doing, and I've got my my, my, my notes here, my, or should I say my kind of bullet points, that sort of thing, doing what you want to do in life. And this is so important, and it's so important un to understand that doing what you do in life is different. Doing what you want to do in life is different then, hi, Jen, how you doing, sweetheart, is different than doing what you feel you must, doing stuff out of a sense of duty, doing um, because you have been told. I'm not talking about that. What I'm literally talking about is doing what you want to do in life. And it's a huge difference. And actually, when people aren't doing what they want to do in life, mm, it may appear that it lacks a, a sense of personal freedom, personal choice. And my thing is, does it? While it may appear that it lacks um, a sense of personal freedom of choice, personal choice, the reality is that nobody does anything that they don't want to do. And I'm not saying that if somebody decides to get you and fling you out an airplane or something like that, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, Jen, out of alignment. We're really out of alignment when we're not doing what we really want to do. So I'm not saying that people people don't take you, uh, can't take you and, you know, throw you over and all, all this sort of stuff. I'm not saying that, the physicality. What I'm saying is if it comes down to you having to make that choice to take that step, you are the one who's doing this. <laughs> doing this and for people it can be such a painful pill to swallow because it puts life into perspective when you actually recognize that the things that you were doing that you say that you don't want to do you're doing them because you've said that you would you've told yourself to do them so it may appear that way that you're doing things and you have no personal choice but you really are doing it and so it's so important to look at what you have, um, okay, sweetheart, take care. Uh, it, it may appear that what you are doing isn't what you want to do, but in reality it is. So my thing to you is simply this. Are you actually vested in what you're doing? Are you actually vested in what you're doing? And being vested, I'm not talking about commitment, guys. I'm just so not talking about commitment. I'm not talking about discipline, self-discipline. I'm not talking about going the, the, the distance. I'm not talking about that when I talk about vested. You see, many of us have experienced going the distance. Many of us have um, experienced um, being committed. Many of us have experienced 
all that sort of thing where you say, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use sheer willpower to get through it. Many of us have experienced that. And all that's to the highest good. I'm not speaking about that in terms of are you vested in what you were doing? You know, many of us have had the um, quintessential bad relationship. It started out really nice, you know, he or she, oh, they were so delicious. Oh, yes. You know, the, the relationship was right. It was hitting on all levels. You're like, this is my soulmate. And your intuition is saying to you, don't do this. No, but you don't understand, you know, intuition, you don't understand. This is the person for me. They're talking my language. They understand. Do you know something? They've been through all the things that I've been through. So they understand who I am and I have to be with them because I love them. And your intuition says, don't do this. You know, that inner voice, the still small voice, the, 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 the voice inside your head that nobody else can hear but you that sometimes you think is driving you crazy. Your voice hears that. And of course, Lise, you're right. Sometimes our personal choices, they, they not only could, they are detrimental. They are detrimental. And this, this voice, you don't listen and, and you go through it. And then 20 years, 30 years, a week, two weeks, that relationship disintegrates. And you say to yourself, you know, I, I should have done what my, my, my internal voice said. I, I, I should have done what my internal voice said. I should have done that. Look at all this time I've wasted. You know, each week I speak with the ladies at Shade Tree and Shade Tree, the Shade Tree is a facility for displaced, abused uh, women, children, and of course, pets. And I'll throw this in. One of the reasons why I love Shade Tree is because it does have Noah's Ark, which is the pet um, it's the pet facility because many people will not leave an abusive situation because of a pet and they'll stay there. And anyway, so in talking to the ladies, I can have a hundred women in the room. I can have two women in the room, one woman in the room. And I'll say to them, didn't your intuition tell you that this relationship was no, no by a show of hands, how many people did their intuition tell them that this relationship was bad? You know, people are putting their hands up, their feet up, they're, they're, everything they're putting because they were told. But where I'm going with this, I'm talking about investing. And where I'm going with this is we choose to invest our time in things that don't bear any fruit. And in investment in this instance, in regard to what are you doing? Are you doing it just because? Is it duty, et cetera, et cetera? Are you doing it because it's something that you feel that you should do? I'm talking about belief. I'm talking about investing, you vesting in what's going on in your life in regards to or in reference to what you believe. I have um, this, this, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, there's, there's siblings, there's three of them and their parents, the, one, one of their parents actually was experiencing uh, trouble with, with their brain and actually they had uh, uh, a surgery, okay? They had tumors and they had surgery, but both mom and dad were definitely getting on in age and two of the siblings were like, okay, all right, we can take care of mom, mom and dad. And the middle sibling was like, no. And they they really were, as finances go, they really, they, they really had the money. I, I think if they incarnated, you know, the next life, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be broke either. They would not be broke as a joke. So they did that that she decided, you know, she had the financial wherewithal, she's gonna take care of mum and dad. And her idea of taking care of mum and dad was to put them into a really stush, and that's Jamaican, I don't know if they use that here in America, but a really stush, a really fancy, a really stush um, retirement home. But of course it was um, independent living with um, assisted living. And they needed a little assistance because, you know, mum didn't always want to cook, but the facility had the thing, you know, where mum could cook if she wanted to, dad could, they could do breakfast, but they also offered nice gourmet meals, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you know, the whole thing, you know, uh, recreation, they can take you shopping, all this sort of stuff. And so she was paying some serious money for this. But the thing is, I'm talking about this in reference to doing what you want to do and then doing things out of a sense of duty, out of a sense of must. 
she decided that she would place her parents here and then dictate to the people who ran the facility what they must do for their mum and dad, for her mum and dad. Well, long story short, the facility called the sister and the brother and said, we are giving your parents 30 days notice. We can't deal with her and we choose no longer to deal with the parents. So what happened, the parents went to the, the sister, which is what they wanted. The sister wanted to do this. This wasn't a sense of duty. The brother wanted to do this too. It wasn't a sense of duty. And so mum and dad went into a loving, a loving environment where their primary uh, domicile is with the, with the sister. And then periodically throughout the year, they go to the brother so that the sister can get some, you know, respite. You know, she can get to do what she wants to do and blah, 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 blah. And everybody's happy. When you're doing what you want to do, it creates happiness within your life. It doesn't create this tension. It doesn't create this tension. So are you vested in what you are doing for the right reasons? Are you vested in what you're doing because you believe it? It's vitally important that you believe in what you are doing. It's vitally important, you know, because at the end of the day, life is too short. Life is, life is short. Life is too short. Life really is short. And I don't know why people, why people don't get this. And I don't, don't understand why people uh, shy away from this. Because what I'm about to say is a bona fide fact. We all have an end date. We all have an expiration date. None of us pass our sell by date. We all have an end date. And people move through life that this is like this isn't a fact. We are infinite beings having a finite experience. We are infinite spiritual beings having a finite spiritual human experience. When you actually embrace that fact, what it can do for you is blow your world wide open. You can start living each day like it's the last or each day like you're not sure if tomorrow's gonna come. So you're not gonna worry about tomorrow. You're gonna live today for this moment now and you're gonna squeeze everything that you can out of this day. When you hear people say life is too short, what they're really saying or what it's really saying is you need to do what you want to do now. You need to do what you, what you want to do now. You need to have the experiences that you want to have. So if you look upon life as a tapestry or you look upon life as a canvas, what are you painting on your canvas of life? Are the things that you are painting on the canvas of your life, the things that you are investing in, the things that you are vested in, the things that you are want to, wanting to do? Because if they are not, if they are not, it's something that you need to look at. It's something that you need to address. It's something that you need to really talk to yourself about. So guys, are you doing what you are wanting to do for your life? Are you doing what you are wanting to do for your life? And if the answer to that is no, I'm not gonna ask you why not. Because why not, it as, as an extrinsic question, isn't helpful. Why not takes you down a rabbit hole where you look for the reasons and the causes and this. That's not helpful. What is helpful is get, getting on track to do what it is that you say that you want to do for your life. And believe me, it's your life. Believe me, it is your life. When your end date comes, that's not my end date, that's your end date. So it is your life. 
So everything that you're doing is about you and your choices. So that being said, I'm not going to ask you why. What I am going to ask you for is in this moment in time. What are you wanting for your life in this moment in time? I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm not talking about your children. I'm not talking about your grandchildren. I'm not talking about the pastor, the church. I'm not talking about your BFF. I'm not talking about your enemy. I'm talking about you. What are you wanting for you in this moment? Just you, nobody else. Just you. You see, you, what you're wanting for you in this moment is what the universal creator, the universal architect, known to me as God and or your chosen deity is wanting for you too. Everybody on the face of this earth, everybody is here for a purpose. You're not here just because. You are here to fulfill the magnificent and the glory of self, of self, showing self, doing self, being all that you can be, fulfilling your potential. Because guys, when you show up in authenticity and you show up in truth and you are walking in truth, what you do is give me, your sister, permission to do the same. So uh, what are you wanting for your life? What are you doing for your life? What is it that you are wanting for you in this moment? That's the question to ask yourself. That is the all-consuming question. Not the why, the how, the when, the where, the who. It's the what are you wanting for you in this moment in your life? And then the golden question, my clients will tell you, um, they know this is coming. I ask that question, you know, well, what are you wanting for you in this moment? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or what are you wanting in this moment regarding the situation that you're in? And again, it isn't about what somebody else wants for you. You see, what you want for you may be really unpopular with your loved ones. What you want for you may be really unpopular with the people that you work with. It may be unpopular with with with, with your your spiritual your spiritual upbringing. It may be the total antithesis of what you have been raised to believe spiritually. It may go against the grain of that. But understand, if you are coming in truth and authenticity, what you are wanting for you is the right thing. And anyway, what I went was going on to say is, you know, I'll say to my clients, you know, what are you wanting for you in this moment or what are you wanting surrounding this situation? Yada, yada, yada. And then I'll say, you know, what's coming? And they're like, oh, gosh, yes. Paint me a picture of what that looks like. Paint me a picture of what it is that you are wanting. Paint me a picture. Take snippets here. Take snippets there. Go within your imagination. Utilize your imagination for what it was given to you for. To create. To create so that you can express on your screen of space. So that you can paint the pictures of the life that you want. So that you can speak them into existence. Paint me a picture. Paint yourself a mental picture. Invoking the universal law of your imagination to create the things that you want in life. So again, you do this so that you are able to do what it is that you want in this life. So that you can live a life knowing, knowing that you are an infinite spiritual an infinite spirit having a finite spiritual human experience and squeeze everything that you can out of it. And once again, what you do might not even be popular with yourself, let alone people around you. 
But recognize when you are doing the right thing, the universal creator known to me as God will move people, places and things so that you can have the things that you say that you want. So on that note, hey, cuz, how you doing? Hope you're doing all right. Um, and Lisa, you had said sometimes our personal choices are detrimental to ourselves and the ones we and the ones we love. Most times we invest in the wrong choices. Sad, but true. And that's really true, Lisa. That's actually really, really, really true. In as much as, as I said before, we invest, we believe in the wrong thing or no, we invest commitment, time, discipline and willpower to get it, getting whatever it is that we say that we're going to do, knowing full well in our hearts of hearts. That's not what we really want, but we're doing it because, and people fill in the blank, because he said he loves me, because I said I love him, because this is the right thing to do, because we have been told this is what you must do. No, that's not how it works. Because the thing that you believe in is the thing that will come to the surface. So guys, have this conversation with yourself. I mean, truly have this conversation with yourself. Ask yourself that golden question, and I call it the golden question. What are you wanting for your life? Then paint yourself a picture and see how that fits in what you're doing with your life. And actually, and I'm going to wind up here by simply saying this. When you look at your macrosphere, when you look at your macrosphere, when you look at your world, the world according to you, the world according to Wendy, when you look at your world, if your world isn't providing for you and giving to you the things that you say that you want, or if your world's full of chaos and drama, or if your world's full of illness and all the things that you don't want, perhaps you need to look at what you are doing in your life in regards to, are you doing the things that you want to do or are you doing what you feel you should, you must, you've been told? It's a huge difference. And that nuance makes all the difference in the world. So guys, um, Monday, depending on where you are in the world, Monday has either come for you and it's early morning or Monday is fast approaching. It's a new week or today marks a new week. So guys, make sure you choose what it is that you want to do in your life. Have an extraordinary week, an extraordinary week. Do the things that you want to do. Perhaps give yourself this week to do the things that you really want to do. Do the things that you really want to do. And on that note, guys, have an awesome week. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. You can find me at the Laws of Attraction in action. Um, the Laws of Attraction in action. What'd you say, Lise? Um, that's .com and right here on Facebook. No drama today and uh, no drama. Today's a new day. I'm going to start living. Um, no more um, what is, no more woe is me, right? Was that it, Lise? No more woe is me <laughs> and no, no, no more chaos, no more drama. So guys, check it out. The laws of attraction in action.com. Oh, just let me say this. Um, already I have the spring of 2018 on the docket already. Um, I'm going to be, and we've already started the process. And I say we, that's me, my cameraman D. We've already started um, filming nutrition, nutrition for um, uh, your chakras the supporting the energy vortexes because nutrition goes beyond keeping body and soul together. Nutrition is all about you and your spiritual self. So I'm excited about that. So we're doing that and a lot of other things with that. Um, I'm going to start doing it now. Love the message. Love you too, cuz. I hope you're doing okay. And on that note, peace people. Love you. I'm out. Peace. Bye.